I want to thank uh, our brothers who um, are here laboring. My head was kind of in the way, so I'm moving to this side. To our standing in the gap as uh, uh, Chris is away. Who was here last Wednesday? Just by show of hands. I mean, last Thursday. Days are starting to see. That's what happened to me on a holiday. You just kind of all. Jacked up a little bit. Okay, we show of hands. Who was it? Actually, let's do that. So we got a bubble. Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. The reason why I'm asking is because we're dealing with the subject of occult indoctrination. And it's a very in depth study. It's a lot of information. Was it a lot of information last week? I mean, it's almost you just kind of like, you don't really know what to say because you're just trying to absorb it all in. It's just so much information. Um, so, uh, I'll kind of try to do a little bit of a review. One of the things that we, oh, let's see if this is going to work. Oh, Lord. Is it not working? It's working. Let's just see how my battery does. I can go down and advance the slides for you if you need to. So one of the things that we were dealing with last week um, was really just talking about do we understand that we're at war? Um, sometimes we really don't, we don't approach life really understanding that this is a battle, that this is a war. And when you understand that it's a war, you approach it differently. And so we were reading the scripture um, in 1 Peter where it says, be sober. Be alert because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. One of the things that I think is interesting, especially when you talk about occult indoctrination and we're talking about entertainment, music, because that's a, a, a large avenue in which uh, Satan uses to spread his message, to spread his gospel, you can say. And um, when we start to talk about that, the first thing normally people do is they dismiss it. Oh, no. And, but hold on. What's the goal of the enemy? What's the goal of the enemy, you guys? Yes, to destroy you. And so one of the things we, we never want to say, no, he wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do it this way. But we always want to be sober. Anybody remember what this word sober means? Sound minded. Sound minded. Alert. Alert. Okay. One of the key things I was using last week was thinking clearly. And so you're able to think clearly. And so we want to be able to think clearly. We don't want to see things fuzzy when you can't really see what that is, but we want to be able to see and think clearly where I can make it out. And I can say, oh, I see you. I see you. You're lying. This is lying. And then we want to be alert. You remember the picture that we had of the dog yeah. with the ears up? And so we always want to be ready. And so the example that I gave um, is if I had a knife and I was a murderer, and I had an orange jumpsuit on because I just escaped from prison. If I was walking around with a big old knife, what would y'all be doing? What would you do? You would stay away, but you would follow me. You would not take your eyes off of me. Where I went, you would keep your eyes wide. Because I have a knife in my hand and I'm a murderer. So you're like, hey, let me keep my eye on the murderer in the room because he might just come up and stab me. Do you have that same train of thought when it comes to the enemy sin, because what's the goal of the enemy? To destroy you. It doesn't matter how, he'll use your mom, he'll use school, he'll use work, he'll use money, he'll use anything he can to destroy your faith in him. And so with that, um, we were talking about uh, Gnosticism. And uh, I was really surprised to hear that a lot of people really had a, a good understanding of, of Gnosticism. And so we just went over it. But one of the main things I want us to understand for those who weren't here is that Gnosticism was a, 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 an attack that Satan used in the early church to discredit the work of Christ. And so it was a, it was a counterfeit. It was something to bring to you, to present to you that would confuse you. And it, it, it was presenting almost a different gospel. It was presenting a different Christ, 
a different savior, basically saying that salvation comes through what they would consider gnosis, through knowledge. And so through this knowledge, you are now set free. And so there were some other key components that we were talking about uh, last week. So number one, one of the key components of Gnosticism was that the God of the Bible is not the only God, but that there are many gods. And one of the reasons why this is so important in Gnosticism is because eventually they teach that you can be God because you have what they call an inner spark inside of you. And so obviously there has to be other gods if you can be God yourself. And so you just have to reach and find that inner spark is what they would teach. Um, also, one of their main teachings is that the God of the Bible isn't perfect. It's in flaw. Basically, Jehovah, or Yahweh, they would say, is ultimately evil. And that's part of their, their main teachings. And that's why they say, well, that's why the world's so messed up and, and different things. So it had the same characters. It even had a savior who supposedly came down. But that's what we talked about, how they made a twist in it. And some will say, well, that savior's Christ. But basically, other sects of Gnosis um, will say, well, no, well, that's Satan. And they take the story of the Garden of Eden where you have the snake, and they'll make Satan the good guy of the story. And so when he came down, he came to bring them the wisdom and came to, to let them know that they can be freed and through knowledge. And it was part of that trick. And we can see the same line. We talked about that same lie. Um, man has, uh, mankind has the ability to be God. God is enslaving men in this uh, material world, and so you can uh, see that where these rules and all these things that we have to do, um, and through the gnosis, through this gnosis, man is awakened and, and set free. Who would follow this? As I'm going through this, it kind of sounds like, that's just so stupid. I mean, who would, come on, who, who would follow this, you guys? Hmm? A lot of people. One of the main reasons people would follow it is because it's not presented how I'm presenting it right now. You guys understand that? I'm presenting it almost with a bias. So I'm, I'm letting you guys know, okay, this is the thing what it's about. This is how it's different. But when it's presented, it's presented in a, a sly way. It's presented in such a way where you're like, well, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right, yeah. That does make sense how, you know, everything's all messed up and, and life is messed up. So it, 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 God has to be, he can't be perfect. How can a perfect God create this world? And so, and sometimes when you find people that are indoctrinating you, one of the things that um, we were bring, talking about with Gnosticism is you have a lot of Hollywood writers who are Gnostic, um, producers that are Gnostic. And so they are now putting the Gnostic themes in movies. And we, we were pointing out some of the different movies, such as The Matrix. Um, one of the things that, as we continue, and the main theme that I want you to, to understand today is the example that I've been given of a murderer. That's a good example, but that's not how Satan is going to approach you. Satan isn't going to come up to you looking like the boogeyman and say, oh, because what you going to do? You're going to be like, man, I see you, man, you're right there. But that's not the, you're not going to come looking like Freddy with claws and you, where you can say, that's the bad guy. No, that's not how Satan is going to attack you. But Satan is going to come at you in ways in which he can deceive you. Because the Bible says that he's what? The deceiver. And so he's going to come at you maybe as your best friend, as your favorite TV show as your favorite music artist, and begin to indoctrinate you, to begin to just put little pieces. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, a little bit of leaven, leavens the whole lump. Um, how many of you have ever heard that scripture? Yeast. yeast, same thing. Yeast, a little bit of yeast, a little bit of leaven. And so it's a great scripture because what happens is, is yeast or leaven is, is what it takes to allow bread to rise. And so if you have a little, it only takes just a little bit of yeast to cause bread to rise. And so it only takes a little bit of deception, a little bit of a lie, and you, before you know it, you're in knee deep. People, I, I, I encourage people, never underestimate the power of sin. 
We know that our God is greater, but don't just say, oh, you know, it, it won't affect me. Humble yourself. Because have you ever watched some of the uh, Murray and uh, Steve, uh, Springer, Jerry Springer? And, and you ever watch some of those? They have the ones where, you know, the girl come up and she got the, the baby daddy, the baby daddy, and they got about 10 baby daddies, and they all trying to figure out who the baby daddy is. And you watch that, and you see the drama. Come I'm the only one that's watched that jump. Okay, man, y'all act like I'm the only one that's watched the jump. Okay, so you're watching it, and the first thing you're thinking normally is like, how could it, that would never be me. Come on, if you said that would never be me, man. Right? I mean, no way. You never said that, you said, I wouldn't be one of those. You never, okay, crazy little Jim. Why? The first time, as soon as you said that would never be me, the one of the things I like to say is sin will take you places you thought you would never go. If you get caught up in sin before you know it, you'll be like, well, how did I get here? Man, I thought I'd never defile myself in this way. I thought I'd never do this. Look at Peter as our example. Peter said, no, Lord, I'm not going to deny you. Humble yourself. Understand the enemy, he's a deceiver, he is a lie. So much so that we find in the book of Revelation where it says, and that great dragon was thrown down. The serpent of old. You know what this is? Same old trick. Remember how we talked about we, we We went back last week to the Garden of Eden. And we showed how it's the same lie. The serpent of old. The old man giving the same old lie. Who is called the devil and Satan. Who deceives who? The whole world. Who? The whole world. The entire world. That's how powerful his deception is. And we have to have our eyes open to that. I have an example here. How many of you have, um, have ever heard of uh, Lady Gaga? Have you ever heard of Lady Gaga? Okay, great. I'm glad you guys heard Lady Gaga. She has this song called uh, Bad Romance. Have you heard the song? Okay, all right. So at least, uh, I wouldn't want to talk to people who ain't never heard the song. It wouldn't make any sense. So, Forgive me, I mess it up, but you know, it starts out and it's like rah 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 mm ba mm ga so mm ga. Want your bad romance? I'm not a singer. No, I'm not preaching. All right, so <clears throat> what is she saying? It just sounds like mumbo jumbo. And before you know it, you like rah 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 mm ga. And that again, I talked about last week the power of music. And so music, man, it just gets in your head. And before I'm, I'm, I remember there was this one song. How many of you guys remember All Dirty Bastard? Many of you had the, the one song where it was talking about, hey, hey, hey. And I would, I despise that song. Dirty, I want your money. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay. I, I was like, I, I would ask them, I was like, why do they play this stupid song? It's so stupid. But then all of a sudden I found myself, hey, 